Welcome to Sunday School for ages 12 to 14 for November 15, 2020. I do not own the rights to this music. True love beyond words. Mama, can I go to the game tomorrow with Leon? Trey asked. She frowned. You know that tomorrow is when we go to feed the homeless. I know, but it's a big game tomorrow. I went to feed the homeless last week, and I promise to go again next week. Can I please just go to the game tomorrow? It's no big deal for me to miss once. Please don't make me go, Mama. Trey, do you remember that this was your idea? When our church asked for volunteers, I told you that I had to work on those mornings. But you said that you needed volunteer credit for school and begged me to let you do this. What did I tell you then? <sighs> Trey sighed. You said that I shouldn't serve just because I need the credit, but that I should do it as an act of love for others. And that if I made this commitment, you would do whatever you had to do to make sure that I could go. Correct. I rearranged my work schedule to accommodate you to serve. And now you want to skip serving because you want to go to a game. But if I go to the game, you can now go to work, Trey pleaded. Trey, I rearranged my schedule as an act of love for you because I love you. I took action. If your heart was really into serving, then you wouldn't be so quick to skip your three-week commitment. Three weeks? Trey, I'll tell you what. You don't have to serve tomorrow, but you still aren't going to the game. Instead, we can both stay home and think about how we'll better serve others in the future. Trey wasn't happy. That entire night, he moped about not being able to go to the game. He called Leon to complain about how unfair his mother was being. He was surprised when his friend said, She's right, man. Had I known you already had an important commitment, I wouldn't have asked you to come with me. It's only one game. There will be other big games in the future. If you say that you love serving, then your actions will line up with your words. The memory verse for today's lesson. My little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. The lesson scripture is found in 1 John chapter 3, verses 11 through 24. For this is the message that ye heard from the beginning, that we should love one another, not as Cain, who was of that wicked one, and slew his brother. And wherefore slew he him? Because his own works were evil, and his brother's righteous. Marvel not, my brethren, if the world hate you. We know that we have passed from death unto life, because we love the brethren. He that loveth not his brother abideth in death. Whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer, and ye know that no murderer hath eternal life abiding in him. Hereby perceive we the love of God, because he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. But whoso hath this world's good, and seeth his brother have need, and shutteth up his bowels of compassion from him, how dwelleth the love of God in him? My little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. And hereby we know that we are of the truth, and shall assure our hearts before him. For if our heart condemn us, God is greater than our heart, and knoweth all things. Beloved, if our heart condemn us not, then have we confidence toward God, and whatsoever we ask, we receive of him, because we keep his commandments, and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. 
And this is his commandment, that we should believe on the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another as he gave us commandment. And he that keepeth his commandments dwelleth in him, and he in him. And hereby we know that he abideth in us by the spirit which he hath given us. The Bible says, Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. The Bible learning says today, Confident love. We can measure how much we love someone by our actions toward them. Love is a word that requires action behind it. This doesn't mean that you have to do everything for everyone. It does mean that you won't intentionally mistreat people because of the love that you have for them. People who say that they love others but mistreat them don't speak the truth. When words and action misalign, people will always believe your actions more than the words. Showing love. The L in love stands for let Christ shine through you. The O in love stands for only rely on him, not yourself. The V in love stands for victory is in him. Claim it. The E in love stands for each day remember that you are a recipient of love. In today's story, Trey claimed to enjoy serving the homeless. Although he had only made a three-week commitment, he was ready to cancel it for another opportunity. Trey's willingness to back out of serving for a non-emergency may indicate his lack of sincerity, especially since he wanted to get service credit. Scripture reminds us that love isn't about what we say or do but about how we behave. Had Trey's heart really been into serving, he wouldn't have so easily been willing to back out. As you think about those whom you claim to love, consider your behavior and ask yourself if your words and actions match. If not, pray and ask God to help you make changes, first in your heart and then in your deeds. Let's take a look at Matthew chapter 25. Matthew chapter 25, starting at verse 31. And this talks about the separation of the sheep from the goats. That reads, When the Son of Man shall come in his glory, and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. And before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was a hunger, and ye gave me meat. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in. Naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee a hunger, and fed thee, or thirsty, and gave thee drink? When saw we thee a stranger, and took thee in, or naked, and clothed thee? Or when saw we thee sick or in prison, and came unto thee? And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye have done unto one of the least of these my brethren, ye have done it unto me. Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was a hungered, and ye gave me no meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me not in. Naked, and ye clothed me not. Sick, and in prison, and ye visited me not. Then shall they also answer him, saying, 
Lord, when saw we thee a hungered, or a thirst, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister unto thee? Then shall he answer them, saying, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye did it not to one of the least of these, ye did it not to me. And those, and these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into life eternal. Let's look at Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12, verse 1. It says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. That means present your body to God. Let God use you. And let's skip down to verse 9 of Romans 12. Let love be without dissimulation. Abhor that which is evil. Cleave to that which is good. Be kindly affectionate one to another with brotherly love and honor preferring one another. Not slothful in business, fervent in spirit serving the Lord. Rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer. Distributing to the necessity of saints, given to hospitality. Bless them which persecute you. Bless and curse not. Rejoice with them that do rejoice, and weep with them that weep. Be of the same mind one toward another. Mind not high things, but condescend to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own conceits. Recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. If it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirsts, give him drink. For in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. The Bible also says in 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 8, And above all things, have fervent charity among yourself, yourselves, for charity shall cover the multitude of sins. Charity is love. 1 John chapter 3, verse 18. My little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. Let's go back to 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 4. Charity suffereth long and is kind. Charity envieth not, charity vaunteth not itself, is not puffed up, doth not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil, rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth, beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Charity never faileth, but whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. When I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. 
For now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know, even as also I am known. And now abided faith, hope, charity. These three, but the greatest of these is charity. Let's look at 1 John chapter 4, verse 7. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God, and knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. God, thank you for this lesson. Help us to understand and walk in love in the name of Jesus. Help us to understand your word more. Help us to know your spirit all the more in the name of Jesus. Help us to walk in love, live in love, and abide in love in the name of Jesus. Thank God. Amen.